if M, P, S, and V are positive and M over P is less than S over V, which of the following must be between M over P and S over V? And then we have one of these three in one type questions. Uh, these can a lot of times be big time suckers. I want to be conscious of time. Uh, if I were to come across this on my actual test. Uh, so let's start uh, with what we know here, because this seems like it's going to be a hard question just from looking at uh, uh, my statements here, or my options here. Uh, so we know this to be true. Uh, can we do anything with this guy here? So we know all of our uh, variables are positive, so we can, uh, we don't got to worry about flipping the sign or anything with our inequality. So we can say this is, this is telling us you know, m times v is less than s times p. I don't know if that uh, will necessarily be helpful. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe I, don't know, I might just test uh, test numbers here. Uh, and now, so what do I need to be aware of if I'm doing that? So they're asking which of the following must be true. Uh, so it must be true for all cases. So if I can find with the numbers that I test, an example that is between M over P and S over V, I can't necessarily say that uh, that choice has to be true. Uh, but what I can do is if I can find a, uh, an example that is not between M over P and S over V, then I can eliminate uh, that option. So that's really what I'm trying to do here uh, is eliminate things. So let's start, let's just uh, try and come up with uh, an easy example here. So let's say, one over four is less than two over three. Uh, so in this case, we are saying M is equal to one, P is equal to four, S is equal to two, and uh, V is equal to three. So uh, let's start with the first choice, uh, M plus S over P plus V. Is that between one fourth and two thirds? So M plus S is going to be one plus two, which is three. Uh, P plus V is going to be four plus three, which is seven. And it looks like three sevenths should be between uh, one fourth and two thirds. So remember, that means I can't necessarily select any of the options that have a one in them. Uh, so I sort of have to either find new numbers or move on. So I want to test these for all my choices first. Uh, M times S uh, over PV. So that would be uh, one times two is two. Uh, P, uh, P times V would be four times three, which is 12. This is one sixth. Uh, so one sixth is outside uh, of our group. One sixth would be over here. Uh, so that is good because I can eliminate anything with a two in it now. What about this third statement? S over V minus M over P. So in our case, that would be two thirds minus uh, one fourth. So if I find a common denominator, uh, that would be uh, eight over 12 minus three over 12. And that would be equal to five over 12. So five twelfths is between one fourth and two thirds. Uh, so I can't really do anything here either. And I'm sort of stuck with these uh, these three options here. Um, so what I might do next is I either gotta come up with new numbers or maybe try and think about these guys a bit. So maybe let's think about this third one here. Cause one thing I notice about this third one is, uh, well, I can manipulate uh, what my statement here to get this because, uh, so if I can subtract M over P from each side, and this is telling me that S over V minus M over P has just got to be greater than zero. So if this is the only thing that has to be true uh, about S over V minus M over P. I am thinking that it's telling me uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, between M over P and S over V. Uh, it's just got to be greater than zero. And so if I think about this just a little bit, I can sort of see uh, when it will be between and when it won't be. Because let's, let's say, for example, uh, let's forget that we have fractions for uh, a second, because let's just imagine we have two, two integers. Uh, when those integers are uh, sort of spread 
uh, far apart from each other. So, you know, let's say our numbers are 100 uh, and 1. Uh, so in this case, uh, subtracting 1 from 100, uh, you're always going to get a number that is, you know, within the range here because the, the range is, is, is so wide. So, you know, 100 minus 1 is 99. Uh, but uh, when you get uh, two numbers that are uh, far apart, or I should say, sorry, opposite, uh, that are really close to each other. So, uh, you know, 100 minus 99. Well, now your range is all of a sudden very small. Uh, and this gives us one. Uh, and so one is nowhere near uh, between 99 and 100. Uh, and so in a case like this, so here, uh, if I was to do a simple example, let's say, uh, I'll make uh, uh, m over p uh, 8 out of 10, and uh, let's say, let's make this 18 out of 20, and let's make s over v uh, 19 out of 20. So what does that have? So if, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, uh, s over v, uh, minus uh, m over p is going to give me 1 over 20. And uh, 1 over 20 is definitely not uh, between 18 over 20 and 19 over 20. So uh, this does not always have to be true. And so anything with a 3 in it, I can eliminate. So then it just comes down to 1 and none. And I'm thinking, uh, without proving it necessarily, I can't. Uh, I think this is always going to be true. A, I'm hesitant to select none. I mean, maybe we could quickly test it with our values here. Uh, M plus S. Uh, so in this case, that would be 18 plus 19. That would give us 37 over 40. Uh, it seems like uh, you know, 37 over 40, that's going to be uh, what? 18.5 uh, over 20. So I think this is always going to work. So I would select B, which I believe is the right answer, but I'm not, uh, I would be selecting it with sort of, you know, 70% confidence or something. And uh, I wouldn't hesitate to uh, move on from this depending on how much, how much time it was sucking up.